Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So a big increase could be on the table for millions of social security beneficiaries as a bill that's been in Congress since 2023 has more than enough support from both Republicans and Democrats for this bill to pass through both the House and the Senate. It just comes down to them actually voting on it. So we are going to be covering that bill, what's in it, and why it would increase benefits for millions of social security beneficiaries by quite a bit. Plus, is it possible that we could have another House Speaker impeached this year? Well, it looks like we might have a bill on the table that would send more aid to Ukraine, which we have some hardline Republicans against and now threatening to oust Mike Johnson from his role, much like Kevin McCarthy was. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm, and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Plus, if you would like to receive up to $10,000 in free stocks or $10,000 in free cash, in the pinned comment below, I will be leaving a link to Moomoo. Moo. All you have to do is once you click on that link, it's just sign up for a free account and then deposit at least $100. At that point, Moomoo Moo will be sending you at least five free stocks worth all the way up to $10,000. And if you'd rather just receive the cash, all you have to do is once you receive the free stocks, it's just sell them for the worth and then transfer the cash value right back to your bank account. Okay, so we're diving right into our lead story of today's video. Well, recently, it was just last year that we had uh, the first House Speaker in quite some time, or maybe even uh, in the uh, history of our country, uh, ousted from his role as the House Speaker. Um, and that was led by Republicans because they did not like the job that he was doing. They thought that he was siding more with Democrats and so he was removed from his role as the House Speaker because of a few Republicans that were against him and then all the Democrats joined with the few Republicans. So he was removed from his role and then later on we were looking for the new House Speaker that took quite some time to actually get enough votes for him to be voted in and it ended up being Mike Johnson. And well, Mike Johnson looks like he might actually be removed just like Kevin McCarthy was. And at this point, what Republican or, or who exactly would want this job it seems like uh, it's kind of like the few Republicans want their way or the highway. And it looks like Mike Johnson might actually be removed from his role because he's going to put a bill on the floor that would send more aid to Ukraine, which we are going to cover right now. So according to CNN, Johnson moving forward with Ukraine aid bill despite pressure from hardliners. So according to CNN, Speaker Mike Johnson announced on Wednesday that he is sticking with his plan to put a series of foreign aid bills on the floor, including funding for Ukraine, after facing significant pressure from hardliners. He said, quote, after significant member feedback and discussion, the House Rules Committee will be posting soon today the text of three bills that will fund America's national security interests and allies in Israel, the Indo-Pacific, and Ukraine, including a loan structure for aid and enhanced strategy and accountability, Johnson said in the note. The three-part supplemental package looks strikingly similar to the Senate's bill in several key ways, including that the package includes a little more than $9 billion in humanitarian aid for Gaza and other conflict zones around the world, which had been a red line for Democrats. The bills taken together also add up to about $95 billion in aid, the same amount the Senate bill included with the adjustment that $10 billion in Ukraine economic assistance is in the form of a repayable loan. This specific assistance is the kind of direct payment that helps Ukraine's government continue to function during a war. Those loans are through approximately $7.9 billion in economic assistance to Ukraine and another $1.6 billion in assistance to Europe, Eurasia, and Central Asia, requiring the president to strike an agreement with Kyiv to repay the funding. The administration could cancel the debt if they choose to, according to a source familiar. Overall, the bill will send $61 billion to Ukraine and regional partners, $23 billion of which will go to replenishing U.S. stockpiles. It will also include $26 billion to Israel and $8 billion to the Indo-Pacific, according to a release from the House Appropriations Committee. So let me know in, your, in the comment section below whether or not you agree with sending all this aid to other countries. If you agree with sending money to Israel, to Ukraine, do you believe that we should be helping them, at least financially, fight their wars against Russia, 
as far as Ukraine goes. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Now, of course, like I mentioned, because Mike Johnson is now putting this bill on the floor, we have a few Republicans who are very against sending more aid to Ukraine. They're saying that we've sent enough, and they're saying that if you do put these bills on the floor, we are going to hold a vote to oust you, to remove you from the role as House Speaker, just like Kevin McCarthy was last year. And it looks like Marjorie Taylor Greene might just do so. And if it her... And a few other Republicans join all the Democrats. It looks like Mike Johnson might also be removed from his role. And then we'd once again, for the third time, be looking for a new, for a new House Speaker. So let me know in the comment section below what you think is going to happen with that. And then as far as Social Security goes, we actually have some good news because there was a bill that was released last year in 2023. And since then, it's been gaining a lot of support, and not just from all Democrats, not just from all Republicans, but it's been gaining support from both Republicans and Democrats, which is pretty much the magic makeup that it will need for any bill to pass through Congress. This has a lot of bipartisan support, it has over 300 co-sponsors, over 300 people saying that yes, they would absolutely vote yes on this bill in the House. And then we have around 53 in the Senate saying they would as well. They would need at least seven more to get the 60 vote threshold for the bill to pass the Senate. But here is a Republican Senator in Mike Braun saying that we need to absolutely pass this bill. We're going to be watching this video that we're going to be coming back to talk about the bill, what's in it, and how many people would be impacted if this bill were to pass. Watch. Social Security is obviously the bedrock for millions of Americans and was a key part of the first aging committee's uh, hearing in 1961. Today, the Social Security Administration, I think, has a customer service uh, issue. Uh, we have uh, billions of dollars of uh, payments that are overpayments, clawbacks, other issues, 800 number waiting times, all things that we need to do better. It's a big business within the federal government, and you got an issue like uh, WEP GPO, which penalizes retirees for choosing public service careers. WEP and GPO can cut benefits in half for public servants like police officers uh, who often supplement their service with a second career. We need to pass the Social Security Fairness Act to eliminate these provisions. It's now got 53 co-sponsors, nine Republicans. Uh, it's probably something, if we'd get our financial house in order, would be a top priority because it's a case of unfairness. So as you can see, not only do we have a lot of Democrats on board with this bill, but we also have Mike Braun, a Republican in the Senate, saying that we need to pass this bill. So the WEP and the GPO are basically two provisions that make it so those who work both a public service job, whether, whether it's a teacher, firefighter, police officer, or anything else, and then they also work another job in which they pay into the Social Security Trust Fund because they're receiving the pension their normal Social Security benefit that they would have been re that they would have been receiving if they had not worked that public service job is actually reduced, which they're saying in this case is unfair. Now, as far as how many people are impacted by the WEP, as of December 2023, about 2.1 million people, or about 3% of all Social Security beneficiaries, were affected by the WEP. And then, as far as the GPO goes. In that same time frame, 745,679 Social Security beneficiaries, or about 1% of all beneficiaries, are affected by the GPO. So we have over 1 million Social Security beneficiaries in total that would be impacted if this bill were to pass. And once again, we can take a look at the bill here in the House. Right now, they have 316 co-sponsors of the Social Security Fairness Act of 2023. Of those co-sponsors, 206 of them happen to be Democrats, 110 of them happen to be Republicans. And then we look at the bill in the Senate. Right now, they do have 53 out of 100 co-sponsors. 41 of them are Democrats, none of them are Republicans, and three of them are independents. So right now, it looks like this bill, both in the House and the Senate, is going to have more than enough support for the bill to pass. So not sure exactly what they're waiting for. It definitely has a lot of support on both sides of the aisle, and they will need to pass this before the end of this year, because if they don't pass it by the end of this year, then someone once again in 2025 will have to reintroduce this bill in both the House and the Senate, and then at that point, the new Congress will be coming in, and then they'll have until 2026 to pass it. So we'll just have to wait and see, but let me know your thoughts and comments below. Do you think this bill should pass? Do you think that it's unfair for people who work both public service 
in private jobs for their social security benefit to be reduced just because they're also receiving a pension as well. Let me know your thoughts in comments below, but that's all we have for today's video. I certainly hope that you enjoyed and found value out of it. If you did, again, I would greatly appreciate if you could give this video a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you in the next video.